Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about looking for a Magic the Gathering location. And it has been quite a journey. I'm pretty much committed. You might ask why? Why do I need a physical store? Well, we had one before in a mall that got flooded. It was called Greenpoint Mall. We have three different offices. One is my home. And my home is a really fun office because, you know, it's a home. And there's dogs and there's ferrets and there's adopted dogs and foster dogs. And it's a fun way to spend Friday. So every Friday, Saturday and Sunday, we work on Saturday and Sunday as well. Well, some parts of the team work I do, uh, we work from my home. Uh, we also meet some clients at my home. It kind of depends. And we have a downtown office in Houston. And the downtown office is really fancy. It has a full-time pianist. So it's one of those offices where you card, you have a card key and you they monitor everything you do, et cetera, et cetera. We're located on the 12th floor. I believe there is 30 floors. It's pretty. It's a pretty decent sized building. And that is where I spend Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And then Mondays and Thursdays, I would spend it, I used to spend it at the Greenpoint Mall, which is actually has been renamed Gunpoint because of all the gun violence at the mall. Now you might ask, why do we pick this place in the mall? Well, uh, per square foot, it's a dollar square foot rent, month to month. If you did it for a six month lease, which no one would possibly do because that's insane, for this place, it would be only like 70, 80 cents. But it's a dollar month to month, making it the cheapest place you can imagine to rent. And so we did it for two months, then it flooded because of Hurricane Harvey. And because it was month to month, we just got, we just said, nope, we're not coming back. Took the computers, the computers are practically all fried. And now we're looking for a new place. Um, part of the things, the part of the reason why I put the store in the mall was the mall was pretty empty. There was a lot of parking, so that's good for clients. And there was a food court that was like semi-okay. It wasn't a great. Uh, people call it gunpoint, but I... From the two months I was there, I didn't notice any gun violence or any violence at all. I thought it was just like a pretty cool mall. I didn't realize it was called Gunpoint until later. Because uh, we're not really from that area. Anyway, now we're looking for a new place. Um, part of what we're looking for is... So this is kind of where I was last Saturday. I don't know when this video is going to be posted. It's just... We don't need a new place because we can go to downtown Houston and we can go to my home to work. But it would be nice to have a, a place with traffic, a place with parking, and a place where the other, I would assume, non-management employees would be working that they live close to. And that's why the mall made a lot of sense because most of them live 15 minutes away from there and they enjoy the mall food and they just have a good time. Men's Mint does not work from there. It works from either the downtown office or my home, or there's actually another office, which is a client office that we work from sometimes. There's actually two client offices that we work for because they're our biggest clients, right? So to summarize, I'm looking for a retail space and we will be selling Magic the Gathering cards because why not? Um, I mean, I have employees, they're all very young. And some of them like magic. Some of them are learning magic. Uh, Isabel, if you ask where did Isabel go, she was actually an employee of the company. See, uh, there were some issues I'm not going to talk about, but we had to let. It was a mutual understanding that she had to. Um, she wasn't a good fit for the company, and we were not a good fit for her. So she left, and we you know gave her a paycheck. We said goodbye, and then goodbye. So we are always looking to hire photographers, videographers, graphic designers, content writers, anything that you imagine a marketing agency would want. Uh, we are always looking for people and it's always younger people. Um, normally this is their first job outside of college and it's a great environment because everyone that you'd be working with, especially assuming you're not management, 
So management is, well, I have Sophie who is working very closely with me on social media and stuff. So she is training. So if you are training, you actually work with me or if Tony of and I, she is a very strong female developer in Houston, or you work with um, our head developer, Norman, and you do training. And then once training's done, you go off to the office. And then management just kind of hangs out together at either my home or the downtown office. So we kind of need a place to put the employees. Um, the downtown office, the one bad part is the parking is very, very expensive. If you ever try to park in downtown Houston, you're paying $20 for a parking space a day. And since our employees are not paid that much, it's really hard for them to justify coming downtown. And we don't have that much space to begin with because rent is incredibly expensive. So we essentially are looking for a cheap retail place, which we can sell magic cards and artwork and anime stuff and also be a marketing agency. Um, now you might pick, hmm, why would you want to sell, you know, anime and magic cards if you're just a marketing agency? Well, we've had, we have had that model before. We were not selling magic cards or anime or anything like that, but we were selling, what were we selling? Uh, <laughs> we were selling plus toys. One of our clients is, um, I don't know, if it's like a big, so one of our clients, I'm not going to mention their name, is a rather large plushie maker. They make plushies, and if I named them, you would know who they are. And we bought a franchise model where, well, okay, so we didn't buy the franchise model. They gave it to us because we did their marketing. So they, as, quote, payment or as a fringe benefit, we ran a franchise that sold this particular stuffed animal. And we did very well. I mean, I think we were broke even, which is pretty well in retail, given the fact that no, nobody had experience and we were all doing marketing. But it was a lot of fun. It was great for team building. So some people go to Top Golf for team. So if you don't know what Top Golf is, it's really fun. Uh, some people go to bowling. They have bowling league. Some people have board game night as a company. Some people go to Dave and Buster's. And we did all of these in, things in the past. But what we, I found was teaching them sales was very important because a graphic designer, oh, and that's a picture of me with my, uh, yeah, that's a picture of me. And teaching them graphic design is, or teaching them sales is very important because a graphic designer does not need to know, does not know any sales, a content writer, none of these people know any sales and they have to understand sales because everyone has to do it at a startup. And that is why I'm opening a magic store. It is a, I would never open a magic store by itself because I think we would fail. I think we would epically fail because it is very tight margins and you need a lot of luck and you need a lot of friendly people um, who like what you are and like who you are as a store. And that's not really for me. I'm not looking to make money from the magic thing. I'm looking for it to train them so they can interact with customers, which is really important. And it makes sense. Uh, we will be selling those plusies, I assume, but we can also sell magic cards because I, I was wondering, like, why don't I just own a magic store? But the answer is I could. And it wouldn't affect my business at all. So if you're in the Houston area and you are a photographer, a videographer, or... I think that's what we need. Actually, we don't need a videographer right now. We need a photographer. Let me know and maybe we hire you. And it's a fun environment. Everyone's super young. Um, Sophie's and I are the oldest. I'm not going to say how, well, I already told you how old I am. All right, so I, um, and then everyone else is younger. Um, Brandon is 22, Tony of I is 25. Norman is 27, I believe, and Isabel used to be, when she worked, she was 22, but we do have, we have replaced Isabel with another person who is, I think, 23, right out of college, and she's pretty good. Our team is really fun. We have, a, I mean, people ask, oh, do we waste time and stuff? Yeah, I mean, dude, they're straight out of college. I expect them to waste time and not be, like, uber productive. Like, there's a training period of 90 days where I really don't have high expectations of you, I just want you to join the culture and like it and be committed to it because 
at the end of the day, like, uh, you know, Amy and Maddie and all these, I don't know if, how many of these people you guys remember from the channel. They wanted to do the channel. I didn't force them to do it. Um, they just did it because they felt it would be kind of fun. Uh, now a lot of them quit and not from the work, but quit doing a channel because they felt like the comments were offensive to them. And that's their decision, right? Um, that is their decision. Although we did hire a very, very adventurous uh, female that uh, I went to NYU with and she is, uh, she might make videos in the channel. She may not, we'll see. Uh, I was a teaching assistant, but I have not seen her in seven, eight years. And so it's kind of weird to reconnect, but hopefully we grab, we, um, we grab her as part of the team. Cause I think she would be a very essential component, adding adventure to the team. She's very adventurous. She is in Laos right now. And maybe you'll see videos of her, like her vlogging and stuff like that. And I feel like we are going to. I'm going to, I'm commit, I'm fully committed to pretty much making sure this works because I need a retail space anyway. Why not sell magic cards in the retail space? There's no reason that I wouldn't want to do that given the fact that I, it could be used as a training tool for my employees to talk to customers, learn about sales, learn about margins. So if you had a random graphic designer or photographer, they are not going to understand margins, overhead, sales, any of that stuff. And it's really difficult to tell them this. But once you, once they're selling stuff, then they're more likely to be able to sell a client on a website or something like that. That is what I found in the past that it has been working for us is to get them kind of doing retail, uh, but also like having the understanding that there are things like margins and overheads and you buy this at X, you have to sell it at Y. Just real life, right? Anyway, bye guys.